Just at 9 this Saturday, the 29th of June 2024. Dollar Diplomacy U.S. Treasury Department's Deputy Assistant Secretary for Asia, Robert Caproth, to visit Colombo next week. Tackling Global Threats Sri Lanka ready to offer specialized police teams and experts to counter global threats, says Minister of Public Security. Debt Deal Benefits Foreign Minister highlights the resumption of several foreign loan funded projects by early July. Elections and promises. Politicians exchange jabs as polls draw close. Obe Vishwasi Dino Sinsurain, then Lagamati Pharmacy in Labak at the Hacker. Mevelave, Ronil Tamai. This is Ada Verna First at Nine. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to Adadarna First at Nine. I'm Aditya Drisingha joining you live with the latest in Sri Lanka and around the world. Now on your top story this evening, the United States Department of Treasury's Deputy Assistant Secretary for Asia, Robert Caproth, is scheduled to visit Sri Lanka next week for the third time following the economic crisis. According to the United States Embassy in Colombo, Robert Caproth's visit underscores the commitment of the U.S. in supporting Sri Lanka during this crucial period. During his visit to Sri Lanka, the U.S. Treasury Department's Deputy Assistant Secretary for Asia, Robert Caproth, is expected to meet with government officials, think tanks and several leaders of Sri Lanka's financial sector. Taking to X, the U.S. Ambassador in Colombo noted that Robert Caproth's visit underscores the commitment of the United States in supporting Sri Lanka during this crucial period. She added that as Sri Lanka works to build its economic recovery and resilience, deepening reforms that encourage transparency, accountability and sustainability in the government, economic and financial sectors is vital. Following the crisis in 2022, the U.S. Treasury Department's Deputy Assistant Secretary for Asia, Robert Caproth, visited Sri Lanka on three occasions, which were on the 26th of June 2022, 25th of October 2022 and the 7th of June 2023. During his engagements, Caproth reaffirmed that the United States would continue to explore areas in which their engagement and support would help Sri Lanka overcome its economic challenges and continue its structural reforms. Crunchy goodness for hunger on the go. Now, Minister of Public Security Tiran Alas informed the United Nations that Sri Lanka is willing to contribute police gendarmerie and criminal justice experts with experience and skills to counter growing threats and challenges to international peace and share the knowledge and experience with any nations. He made those comments while addressing the United Nations Chiefs of Police Summit. The threats to peace have become more diverse and complex than ever before. Violent conflicts have been on the rise during the last two decades. Protection of civilians has become a critical concern in many conflict-ridden areas, with the humanitarian landscape becoming increasingly hostile with non-traditional threats. New advanced technologies have opened new domains of security concerns, such as cyber security and autonomous weapon systems, together with the abuse of ICT for criminal criminal purposes and the induction of mercenaries. In this backdrop, Sri Lanka appreciates the pith and substance of the Secretary-General's new agenda for peace. My delegation recalls with pride that Sri Lanka has been a committed contributor to UN peacekeeping since the deployment of military observers at the end of the Suez War. I am confident that the Sri Lanka Formed Police Unit, which is at readiness level 3, stands by with the capacity to handle the emerging security landscape. Organized crime, gang violence and illicit economies are rapidly on the rise. This is becoming a growing challenge to international peace. It is therefore imperative that the United Nations consider deploying specialized police teams with experience and skills to counter this menace. Sri Lanka is willing to contribute police, gendarmerie and criminal justice experts with experience and skills to counter such threats and to share the knowledge and experience with any host nation. Sri Lanka stands ready to partner in this noble endeavor. Horizon Campus 2024 Intake. Register now.
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, President's Council Ali Sabri highlighted that some of the projects funded by foreign loans will resume by early July since the government successfully entered into agreements with its bilateral creditors. Addressing a media briefing, the foreign minister said that the debt repayment will commence in the near future in a way that does not exert pressure on state coffers. Debt servicing commencing for the bilateral debt. Will there be considerable pressure on the forex reserves? At the same time, we are also seeing that certain imports will be relaxed, including the vehicles. Won't there cause any further impact on the current dollar rate? Right now, we are seeing that gradually it has started climbing from 295 to today it's around 306. I don't see so. Basically, we on the long run, the idea by the time that we started repaying, we will have enough income, we will have enough funds to pay that. So that's the idea of it. Rupee if you look at last one year from last March or so, it had been kind of there is about 10% up and down. It, it came down to the 290 levels, went up to 323, 20, 25 levels, then came down to again 300 level. So I think we should expect that for about 10% 10, 10 of up and down. But we don't see immediately any of those things because the in terms of the IMF debt sustainability analysis, by the time we started repaying, we will have sufficient funds not to disturb our reserves and then not to disturb our day-to-day -day other activities. The President had mentioned in the special address that this will also give way to uh, lead to uh, resumption of several projects which were uh, dependent on loans. Any timeline on when that could happen? I mean, when could they could resume? I think immediately, because as far as the foreign countries are concerned, they will not wait for the sovereign bond restructuring because their loan have been already restructured in terms of signing this. So I think it could happen at any time immediately. For example, Japanese foreign minister, when she visited Sri Lanka, she told that as we sign from the OCC and all the countries with the OCC, it will happen. Hopefully, we will try to finish it within the next coming week. Some of those projects will probably will start early July. Now, opposition leader Sajid Premadasa claims that Sri Lanka's economy must be transformed into an export-oriented economy with state intervention to facilitate growth. Speaking at an event in Nittambur, the opposition leader went on to criticize the incumbent government's arbitrary imposition of taxes, which according to the opposition leader, should not be the response to every issue. The 271st iteration of the Sakwala program was held at Kittamara Mahavidyale in Nittambur under the patronage of opposition leader Sajid Premadasa. <laughs> We have been ensnared by economic death traps on every front. Against a backdrop as such, the solution pushed forward at the moment is tax hikes. According to the agreement signed recently, we will have to start paying back our bilateral debt by 2028. Although the IMF initially proposed that the debt be paid back by 2033, our government's incompetence brought the grace period to 2028 from 2033. We have signed such an unfavorable agreement. How can we solve the problem of this country like that? We have to establish an export-oriented economy. We have to encourage and strengthen the businesses of micro, small and medium-scale industrialists since they are the driving forces of our economy. State intervention is needed. That is the only way to facilitate economic growth. There is no other solution apart from growth to address this issue. However, no one talks about growth today. Instead, they impose taxes on taxes, burdening the public to insurmountable heights. Their response to every issue is a tax hike. And while accepting the unwise decision-making and misjudgments regarding the country's future led to Sri Lanka's full-blown full economic crisis, Minister of Health Dr. Ramesh Patrana claims that the centre-left governments led by the SLPP and the SLFP had the right vision for the country. He made those remarks at a meeting in Kuliapitiya today. The Sri Lanka Pudjana Perumuna Kulia PTA electorate meeting was held today, garnering the participation of several key members of the party. We have to accept that we made a mistake in managing the finances of this country. We must accept that our misjudgment of the future and certain unwise decisions led to the financial crisis. The centre-left governments led by the SLPP and the SLFP had the right vision for the country. Despite whatever challenges may come its way, that political ideology will always prevail. Our political enterprise led by the SLPP will be the decisive factor 
sector which will form the next government and elect the next president. Neither the SLPP nor the parties that criticize it would have been able to hold at least a single electorate meeting if the idea is that a government could be formed by a struggle was established. A government formed through a struggle is not democratic. However, we elected a president through the parliament. Our policies are diametrically opposed. We don't agree with some of the decisions taken. However, we had to take those decisions in order to ensure political stability. We did not attempt to sabotage those decisions. We supported those decisions. We took decisions in the interest of the people. All loans which were taken by Mahindra Rajapaksa added value to Sri Lanka. The incumbent president is attempting to privatize several enterprises which were developed by Mahindra Rajapaksa. We kindly request the government to not arbitrarily privatize those firms since there will be no benefit for the country or its people by such an effort. Meanwhile, leader of the new alliance, Anura Priyadarshanayapa, questioned why those who criticize privatization now did not develop those assets properly when they were in power. Meanwhile, me, chairman of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, Nimal Siripala de Silva, highlighted the tumultuous journey to establish the new alliance and went on to reveal that no party was keen on joining an alliance with former SLFP chairman Maitri Pala Sirisena at its helm. The second rally of the new alliance led by the SLFP was held in Balavaya today. I heard some political leaders claiming recently that privatizing public property is wrong. I accept that it is wrong. However, I want to ask them if they developed those assets properly back then. You are subsidizing all loss-making entities. We must do away with the concept of a national economy and be economically astute to turn those entities to revenue-generating ones. This is where we must begin politics. We never voted for Anil Vikramasinghe. We always campaigned against him. However, as you already know, he accepted the responsibility of reviving the country when everyone else avoided it. He only wanted a team to support him. Thereafter, we took up cabinet and state ministerial portfolios and joined his effort to revive the nation. One must not fear challenges. We will appoint the next president of this country. It is not easy to form an alliance like this. We struggled for many months during the former chairman's tenure to set up an alliance. However, no party was interested in forming an alliance with the former chairman at the helm. When it comes to politics in the country, members matter as much as the party does. We cannot establish an alliance and take it forward with only a few random members. Now, leader of the National People's Power, Anur Kumar Disanayaka, highlights that this country can only be turned around with the unwavering perseverance and courage of its citizens. Addressing a gathering, the party leader went on to guarantee that a NPP government would establish an environment for scholars and researchers and academics to function independently. The science and technology policy of the National People's Power was unveiled today in Colombo under the patronage of party leader Anurag Kumar Adisanayaka. The event saw the attendance of a number of Sri Lankan scholars and scientists employed across the world. The United States of America allocates 3.5% of their GDP for research and development. However, they don't spend those funds frivolously. They allocate those funds among 438 institutions like the NIH across various sectors. Those such institutions then have the responsibility to determine which research programs are imperative for the country's future development. Subsequently, funds will be disbursed to finance those specifically identified research programs. If those researchers are successful, the research outcomes will be transferred to incubator facilities building convenient locations to fine-tune the outcomes further. That is a protocol followed by all developed nations. Sri Lanka is not far behind. We have a lot of research institutes. I honestly believe that we are not second to the United States of America. I in fact believe that we are better than the Americans. That is why they have recruited me to work for them. But what is the issue then? America has surpassed us by leaps and bounds. Why is that? Our researchers are all over the place. There is no collaboration between our researchers. Unfortunately, these research projects are not linked to the country's economy. This is a serious issue. America became successful since they have recruited people like us. So why don't we use our skills to develop our country? 
Wurtividin, Vidya Tim Parish, checking it, the Karmanta Karun, Via Parking it over. The NPP government will construct a suitable atmosphere where all trade union activists, scientists, industrialists, and entrepreneurs will be able to execute their duties and responsibilities independently. I saw some people celebrating when the debt repayment was slightly postponed. What were we actually celebrating? They obtained loans themselves, which they then failed to pay back on time. Then those same people who took on debt held discussions to postpone the debt repayments. Subsequently, the president addressed the nation and that was celebrated by some. What does this show? This clearly depicts that we are a country with no achievements to celebrate. We need to explore more avenues to turn the country's trajectory towards victory and to overcome the crisis. South Korea earns 685 billion US dollars through exports. The annual export income of Vietnam is 375 billion US dollars. Then there's Sri Lanka, which currently struggles to pay off 41 billion US dollars in debt. We will never progress if we continue along this path. We need to stop idling around and stride towards victory. We can only change the trajectory of this nation with the unwavering perseverance and courage of a substantial majority of this country. Welcome back. Now highlighting that the Sarvajana Balaya Alliance is the only stainless political platform at the moment, Leader of the Maubi Majanata Party, Dilit Jayavira, says that the party will hold a debate next week to develop on developing the country and creating more streams of income. Meanwhile, addressing the gathering, leader of the National Freedom Front, Vimal Viravansa, says that President Ranil Vikramasinghe is, uh, is attempting to further exacerbate the country's woes by taking on more debt. Themed an entrepreneurship state, a happy nation, Sarvajanabale Alliance's public rally in Gaul was held today at the Gaul Municipal Council premises. The public rally was graced by leader of the Madhul Janata Party, Dilip Chavira. <laughs> there was a massive war in our country. That war was against terrorism. The 13th Amendment was implemented in response to that conflict, yet the issue remained unsolved. However, today, all parties except ours claim that they will implement the 13th Amendment. We as the people of the North never wanted a separate nation. We never asked the government to provide us a separate nation, a separate law or even separate lands and power through the implementation of the 13th Amendment. All we required was equality. However, the politicians of the North crushed all our requests and proceeded to fulfill their own personal wishes by creating disputes among communities. Many have started to become anxious as we continue to progress by providing leadership to those that love this country. The SLPP has begun to again claim that they love the country. How can they say that after supporting President Ranil Vikramasinghe? As elections draw closer each day, the value of those who change their alliances regularly become more and more valuable. Those who lack a policy for themselves and change their alliances for ministerial positions have gained some value. Seventy-three percent of the foreign loan interest premium needs to go to our bondholders. However, there is no agreement regarding this seventy-three percent. A majority of that seventy-three percent was obtained by Vikramasinghe. He is responsible for this crisis and now he is attempting to obtain more loans. He is attempting to obtain more foreign loans. Obtaining more loans as such could lead to a situation where no leader would be able to take this country forward. This party is the only stainless political party at the moment. During the coming week, we will begin a debate on developing the country and creating more income sources by motivating the people while creating a positive mindset. We will establish this under the concept of building an entrepreneurial state. Now, the 71st edition of Manusad Derner's Medical Clinic series for the early identification of kidney disease was held today. The event was held at the Arnagang Villa Vilyaya Primary School in Polo Narva. Along with the medical clinics, the Sri Lanka Eye Donation Society conducted free eye examinations and provided free spectacles. 
The clinics are being carried out by Manusat Derna in partnership with Leeson's Hospitals, the International Institute of Health Sciences, Sipla Education and the Sri Lanka Eye Donation Society. With that, let's take a look at some local news in brief. One MI-17 helicopter was dispatched to the SLAF aviation contingent in the Central African Republic utilizing a UN-provided AN-124 aircraft. The cumulative revenue generated for the National Treasury from UN peacekeeping missions since 2014 exceeds 127 million US dollars. This income has been derived from extensive flight hours, troop compensations and self-sustainment. Meanwhile, over 1,208 kilograms of seized narcotics were destroyed after court proceedings pertaining to those narcotics were completed. The seized narcotics were destroyed using a high-powered drug incinerator at the Vanathavilu Lactose Estate. In other local news, a container truck drove off the road this morning, colliding with a motorcycle and ramming into a business building in the Jayala Dailature area. The motorcyclist succumbed to the injuries, while another woman injured in the incident was admitted to the Ragama Teaching Hospital. A security camera captured a collision between a car and a motorcycle in the Gananirgama stretch of Bandaragam Horan Road. Three individuals travelling on the motorcycle were slightly injured. Three of the six crew members of a fishing vessel that set out from Tangol have died, while two others were seriously injured after consuming the liquid content of a bottle found floating in the ocean, which they reportedly mistook for liquor. The incident occurred while the boat was around 320 nautical miles off the coast of Sri Lanka. According to the spokesperson of the Sri Lanka Navy, the vessel is being towed back to land with the help of another craft. Now in your business news, the central bank states that the cumulative import expenditure during the first five months increased to 7.2 billion US dollars compared to the 6.79 billion US dollars recorded during the corresponding period last year. Meanwhile, the cumulative export earnings between January and May this year have improved to 5 billion US dollars from 4.86 billion US dollars recorded during the corresponding period last year. The deficit in the merchandise trade account amounted to 393 million US dollars in May 2024, up from 447 million US dollars recorded in May 2023, supported by a relatively larger contraction in import expenditure than that of export earnings. Meanwhile, the cumulative deficit in the trade account from January to May 2024 widened to 2.17 billion US dollars from 1.92 billion US dollars recorded over the same period in 2023. In May 2024, the income earned by Sri Lanka from the export of merchandise declined marginally by 0.8% to 1.011 billion US dollars compared to 1.019 billion US dollars in May 2023. A decline in earnings was observed in agricultural exports while industrial exports and mineral exports increased in May 2024. The central bank noted that the cumulative export earnings between January and May this year have improved to 5 billion US dollars from 4.86 billion US dollars recorded during the corresponding period last year. Meanwhile, expenditure on merchandise imports declined by 4.2% to 1.405 billion US dollars in May 2024 compared to 1.466 billion US dollars recorded in May last year. The central bank notes that consumer and intermediate goods contributed to this decline in import expenditure while an increase was recorded in the import of investment goods. The CBSL report added that the cumulative import expenditure during the first five months increased to 7.2 billion US dollars compared to the 6.79 billion US dollars recorded during the corresponding period last year. The workers' remittances in May 2024, meanwhile, remained at levels similar to those in April 2024 at 544 million US dollars. Earnings from tourism in May 2024 were estimated at 154 million US dollars in comparison to 226 million US dollars in April 2024 and 100 million US dollars in May 2023. Now on your corporate updates, Brown & Company PLC announced the sale of its entire 100% stake in Brown's Fabric Limited to Salon Knit Trend Private Limited. With that, here's a look at more corporate news in brief. Sri Lanka's Brown & Company PLC yesterday announced the sale of its subsidiary, Brown's Fabric Limited to Salon Knit Trend Private Limited. 
In a filing to the Colombo Stock Exchange, Brown & Company PLC added that 100% of its shares of Brown's Fabric Limited were disposed for a total consideration of 50 million rupees. The statement added that the relevant transaction was finalized on the 20th of June this year. Meanwhile, Group Chairman of Laughs Gas PLC Deshabandu Egapiti stated that LPG is positioned to play a pivotal role in the global energy mix due to its versatility, cleanliness and relative abundance. In its annual report for the financial year 2023-24, Wegapitya stated that as countries worldwide strive to meet their climate targets and reduce their carbon footprints, the demand for LPG is expected to rise. Group Deputy Chairman Tilak De Silva added that the company's mission remains steadfast in delivering sustainable solutions which benefit customers and contribute to the advancement of the country. In other corporate news, the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce launched the Spark Youth Entrepreneurship Competition 2024, enabling youth entrepreneurs across the island to pitch their business ideas and win big at the grand finale in September. Spark 2024 aims to foster entrepreneurial spirit among the country's youth through workshops and boot camps. That's all the news we have for you tonight. Thank you. Have a great night.